Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. So my background, uh, very quickly, I originally grew up in China. When I was in high school, I have a, one of my classmates, his father is a visiting scholar to US. You know, at that time, not many Chinese speak English. So it's considered really at events. So I asked him, what do it look like in US, you know, you being a, a visiting scholar in US? He said, the US is really at events. Even the little kids speak English. <laughs> so, so I'm going, wow, that's really nice. So I, I studied very hard, went to United States, uh, studied in Purdue, got my PhD in human, uh, human factors. And uh, in 1999, I started work for a small company called eBay. Um, then, you know, I worked for another company called uh, Augmentum. I built up a design agency in the company with 150 people. Then, oh, uh, then 10 years ago, I joined Alibaba. So a lot of time when people uh, talk about Alibaba, they ask me, is Alibaba in restaurant business? So let's take a look of what's Alibaba. Just give a very brief overview, right? So Alibaba, the core is basically buyer and the seller. You, you connect them. The buyer pay the money, and then the seller ship the product. But on top of that, Alibaba start over time build up our platforms. And uh, you have on the left-hand side the retail business. On the right-hand side the B2B business. Then not only um, and, uh, stopped here, just build up the different uh, platforms, then Alibaba also started to build up the whole ecosystem. You know, including the payment, entertainment, and marketing, even social media. Um, and then, in order to support all the business, then we also need to build up the infrastructure for the computing. So Alibaba actually now is the third largest uh, cloud computing service company. So that's the whole business. So why I have uh, two titles in the introduction? So in the early, uh, in the a few years ago, when Alibaba started to not only focus on business, but start also do research. So the company started to propose we do quantum computing, do the AI, you know, all the fancy technology. Uh, I, some of them, I, I don't even know what they're doing, right? So for, for me, I'm a designer. I said, uh, you know, we cannot do that. We cannot only focus on the technology. As a designer, we have to also embrace the change of the technology marry the design together with all the technology. That's why you know, I draw this chart and uh, propose to the company. Then we start to build up a, a lab called Natural Human Computer Interaction Lab. Why do we want to do that? So here the trend, we see the trend you know, over time. In the beginning, many years ago, when you have the command line UI, humans have to learn the language of uh, machine. You have to, uh, a lot of you probably remember ls-al, right? List all the content in the directory. But you have to remember the language. But then over time, you have the GUI, graphic user interface. What do you see, the, what do you get? That's nice. But now, uh, moving to the next stage, you start to have a more and more natural capabilities. We can leverage human natural capability. The machines start to understand the human and to learn from us. That's the way to communicate. Why do we want to do that? Let's take a look of uh, what happened uh, in, uh, in China. So when we think about it, how many people can communicate with the computer with a keyboard? I just calculated based on how many PCs sold in China. 170 million people, right? But how many people can use the GUI, the graphic user interface of mobile? So 700 million. But if we have uh, all the natural capability, the language capability communicated with the computer, we can really serve 1.4 billion users. So meaning like we still have a long way to go, right? Still have a lot of room we can go. So that's, that's how we set up our uh, uh, research framework. So we say we have a one on one hand we have a human, on the other hand is the computer. But human not only have uh, the visual capability, but we also have the haptics, the, uh, also the smell. We have a different capabilities. But internally, we also have our emotions. We have our um, understanding the cognitive processes, right? And on the computer, on the other hand, the change is the 
now the computer, it's not only computer, not only mobile, but also everyday IoT devices. So that's basically our framework. We want to research in that area and make sure human can communicate with the computer uh, much easier, leveraging our natural capability. So that's our vision of uh, the research lab. Then we when we pick the project, we, we look into you know, the user impact and also look into the scale possible um, scalability. You know, in terms of the scalability, uh, you know, in, in China, actually, uh, a lot of cities uh, with a lot of population. I calculated uh, how many cities in, the, in Europe have over one million population. It's uh, 35, if I remember correctly. But in China, there is 176 cities over one million population. So many things when you do, you cannot do here, but you, uh, because the scal scalability, you can do it over there. It's very interesting. So here is the, what we did, a uh, short video. From the Chinese yin-yang philosophies to the golden ratio, from woodblock printing to VR, the fusion of art and technology never ceases to amaze. We're now utilizing technology to understand what makes up an image with technologies to identify distinct components within an image. We're able to provide image editing processing services and auto optimization within e-commerce platforms. We're helping AI learn the patterns of Chinese characters. By importing data on its distinctive strokes, we can greatly expand our database of AI fonts. With deep learning, AI can create powerful multi-dimensional videos based on its knowledge of visual language, rhythm, imagery, and emotional algorithms. Through AI self-learning, human-computer collaborations will be enhanced. Better machine awareness, for example, can help boost our creativity. We're also exploring the possibilities of deeper human-computer communication. By improving voice interactions with AI, machines help us gather valuable insights into user sentiments. Human-computer interactions will mature. As AI becomes more emotionally intelligent, it can interpret subtle changes in human behavior. And our interactions with machines will become more genuine. This is the beauty of combining art and science. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities in human-machine interaction. Okay, great. So when we pick the project, we want to make sure, you know, we have the grand vision, this uh, future. But on the other hand, when we pick the project, we want to make sure we have uh, the project where just identify one use case, one scenario, and work with uh, probably one seller to compare, you know, what happened with uh, our new technology and uh, with the past, then we, we will expand it over time. So what I'm going to do is just introduce some of the projects that we've done recently. So the first project is the AI fund. You know, when you talk about the funds, uh, it's very interesting. In the US, we have uh, uh, 26 characters, right? So that's how many Chinese characters you have to learn in order to communicate, right? 6,000, uh, a typical uh, database, typical font set have 6,763 characters. So what happened is that a lot of uh, the font companies, they charge a very expensive uh, font. Um, you know, in order to use uh, the font, you have to pay to buy the whole font. But sometimes it doesn't make sense. You know, like uh, when people in love, they say, you know, I, I, can, I don't know how to express my love. I give you a dictionary because the whole, the world, uh, the whole word in the world cannot express what I mean, right? But on the business side, it doesn't work that way. People come up with a, a banner that says uh, for sale. Use like a two, two character, uh, I mean two words, but you charge them the whole dictionary, right? So it's very expensive. So what we did is basically we, uh, try to use uh, AI, try to learn you know, how to generate the funds. 
what happened is that we have our own database, track all the styles, and when you need a font, then we will come up with the, the style needed. Then we will come up with the, all the uh, special characters where they have a very unique stroke. And based on the stroke, give it to the machine, feed it to the machine, learn it over time, then modify it, then also QA, it, then later just deliver it. And we, we can save like a, over 50% of the time, make the font uh, much cheaper. And also, depends on what kind of font. If the font is really handwriting font, we, we learned actually it's really easy. Just uh, you know, go once, probably you can just deliver it. So um, also, another example is the, the short video. So those days in China, it's so popular to have the short video because most of people shopping uh, using mobile phones Generally speaking, over 75% of the sales happen in, on mobile. During our double 11 days, 90% of the sales happen on mobile. So coming with the mobile, people want a lot of content and very dynamic content. The, so the short video is really important. So we use the machine to understand the, the product. The first one, you just you know, uh, try to analyze the... So analyze a static uh, uh, listing with the uh, pictures and uh, text, and we generated this uh, short video. We generated uh, all the music uh, related. And the second one is that if you have a listing with a picture uh, and a video. We combined the picture and the video to generate this short video. The last one. So the last one actually, the seller will take the video, just upload it to the system. The system will do the editing automatically and uh, use a uh, machine to recognize what's the style in the, in the video. And the text was generated by the machine. It's not even human writing. So try to explain uh, a short, because it's a short video, I'm going to use a short video to explain what's happened, right? Alibaba Wood, a smart short video robot which understands you most. It can obtain and analyze the existing product details from Taobao or Tmall automatically and the priority of selecting video materials is based on two dimensionalities, sentiment analysis and content recognition, which include product images optimization, video clip selection, selling points organization, information presentation, and so on. And it will organize the storyline based on short video narrative lens combination via its style, selling points, etc. Besides, it will analyze complex product information and present it by data visualization vividly. Alibaba Wood can also analyze product style from brand type and consumer's preferences in order to recommend correct background music which is suitable for product style. And it combines music and pictures together by analyzing and understanding of music. Finally, it can present a unified audio-visual feeling through music transition matching, shots organization, shots movement, and special effects. In addition, combined with knowledge graph, experience evaluation, and effective computing, it can conduct personalized evaluation and content distribution to the short video. Alibaba Wood, a simple, intelligent, and efficient one-stop short video marketing solution. So then we worked with uh, some of the seller to test it out. So that's before and after. We found like we actually save uh, the cost by 90%, and we uh, increased the conversion rate by 36%, just providing the video, the short video. 
And the, during the two weeks of uh, uh, the, the testing period, we increased the 700K RMB sales for that specific seller. Then we start to promote it uh, within Alibaba. Last year, uh, only half a year, we generated over like a, a 15 million uh, short videos used uh, in different uh, business. So there are a lot of applications, you know, could be used uh, not only for the product listing, but also social media and also advertising the video SEO. There are a lot of scenarios we can leverage that. You know, we also then identified uh, another case. So, you know, in, in China those days, it also interesting the, the live broadcasting as a way to sell product become very popular. So take a look of this guy. In China, the hottest lipstick salesperson is not a woman. It's a man. Meet Li Jiaqi, better known as Lipstick Brother. He's an internet celebrity and the number one seller of lipstick online. He even took on Alibaba chairman Jack Ma to see who could sell the most lipstick. And Li won. Li represents a new generation of young Chinese men who care a lot about how they look. He applies base makeup and draws his eyebrows every time before he goes out. And from where he stands as a popular makeup expert in China, he knows he's not alone. Li says there is definitely a growing trend in male beauty happening in the country. You probably still shocked by the fact, right? So w what I want you to pay attention actually to what's the equipment he used to uh, live broadcasting, right? He just used this, uh, his phone and uh, with a tripod and that's, way, that's the way he broadcasting uh, his live show. But challenging in those kind of video is that sometimes it's really long because they, they get on the show, they will talk for two hours and they can sell a lot of product. But on the other hand, the, the two hour video, it cannot be used. So in our case, we use our technology to cut those into small chunks and make them into small video, short video. Then you can also use that for distribution. For example, here, uh, My friends don't walk there, run. Skinny dipping rabbit holes for fun. Doi? Uh, Douyin is a very famous short video website, so we created uh, the short video specifically for that site, so this, this way we can distribute it. And uh, over time, we actually made uh, over uh, 12 million uh, short videos like that. So next project I want to uh, go over very quickly that we call the Refinity, where we try to um, you know, leverage uh, human other senses, like for example, for haptics, already have the technology leveraging ultrasound to make mid-air haptics where you can, you can fill the product. Because in, uh, in China, there are a lot of offline scenarios uh, for shopping. So uh, for the haptics and also the naked eye 3D monitor, so we want to combine all those into one kind of uh, offline shopping experience. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, basically have uh, the body gesture as the way to control and plus the haptics and can also combine with the smell and uh, combine with uh, uh, all the controls. So, uh, another short video to explain. Okay, I'll, I'll skip. Basically, that's like a full-blown uh, technology. We put it together, tried it out. 
But on the other hand, you know, uh, who going to use that technology? How to identify cases where it can be used in specific situation? But for example, in this case, it, uh, uh, for a factory, it's very simple, just a gesture, you know, to navigate the factory. You know, just like their showroom, because online, a lot of time, you don't know the factory, what's the factory set up. We just use this kind of technology to use for the showroom. So I'm going to uh, go through some other slides very quickly. So that's another uh, technology where we use a multi-model uh, interaction where uh, you can use voice to order products. But because it's in a very noise uh, environment, a lot of time you don't know uh, who is talking. So we actually combined the, the camera, try to read the lips, who is talking, and then you know, uh, make, make sure, pick the sound the source correctly. So I'm going to skip the video. Another one, the uh, uh, KFC, we work with them. And that's interesting one. Uh, just, you know, try to compare. So it looks like in that situation, a machine learn, a machine win. So uh, very quickly, other uh, scenarios, we also studied the uh, olfactory, where you know, the, uh, before the smell, uh, you know, a lot of product in Alibaba, we calculate about 25% of the product, actually the smell related. So we want to digitize all the smells. And this way we can, we can uh, leverage the smell, try different situation to apply it. For example, we can use the equipment, uh, some of the equipment actually take a human sensories, use the uh, protein in our, our nose sensories and generate uh, the sensor to measure, you know, the, uh, to digitize all the smell. And we generate the database, we can also visualize it. And we use uh, our product to try to then sell it uh, on, the, on the website to come up with a recommendation based on similar uh, smells. And we test it out. That's also pretty effective in terms of uh, explore uh, new products. And uh, OK, the, the last example is the example of uh, uh, visually impaired. So we talk about graphic user interface. The advantage is what you see, what you get. But what if you cannot see? That's actually a disaster. I observed uh, some of the visually impaired people. They try to use uh, the user interface because all the controls, all the uh, information is uh, combined. So they have to read the screen. They, they can play the screen reader 10 times faster than normal, normal people can hear and try to find uh, try to identify you know, what are the controls and what the information on the site. So in our case, we basically um, find that it's really difficult for those users. And we come up with uh, our uh, proxy in between, try to reorganize the information displayed to the user accordingly. So what we did is we have a, like overlay and have a six buttons. On the left-hand side is the navigation. On the right-hand side is the uh, content specific. So, for example, if you are on the detail, product detail page, um, on the right hand side, then it become add to shopping cart, read the product details, add to favorites. So it's more context specific. So let's take a look at the last video. <laughs> Let's 
所结果，已选中白色，白色，立即购买，要转到订单详情。Smart Touch 界面语义理解，帮助用户清晰的了解界面上的内容。进入耳朵模式，交易成功，支付了二十五点零。Ear Touch 支持用户单手操作手机，通过耳朵的 gesture 读取屏幕信息。今天使用了 Smart Touch 和 Ear Touch， 总体的感觉让我觉得，嗯，特别便捷方便，对我们来说，隐私有一种保障。Smart Touch 以后会支持更多手机应用，帮助视障用户随时随刻更加方便、高效地使用手机。原机自然交互，创造体验新生活。So currently, we are working with the Alibaba applications, try to have that implemented for all the application. But later, we're going to expand it. So that's how many generation in、uh, of design we finally come up with the all the buttons. And we also talk about where you know、uh, have the air interaction. They can double tap and read the contour of the air. Use that as the interaction technology. And also,、uh, in terms of the device, we put it on. We don't really need a. They don't need a other people's help. We have this device help them to put it on. So the last slide is about the future of uh,、um, you know、uh, the experience design. So. In,、uh, Last year, in 2018, in the Kai, we actually organized a,、uh, a session where we talk about what's going on、uh, in the future. So we,、uh, in that session, we agreed, you know, natural、uh, user interface going to be very important. And here are some of the characteristics and the technology really needed. So basically, in the future, it really. Uh, need to combine the design and the technology together, really help a human to understand,、uh, help the machine to understand the human better, and then we can come up with a better interaction. And that's my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Very interesting. Oh, I get to be on this side. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. My pleasure. Now, How can we, as a design community, make sure that the ethical standards are being upheld when we're designing for AI? Well, yeah. I, in in our case, we have a, a dedicated uh, uh, data uh, team where they in, they ensure all the data、uh, it is saved、uh, correctly, you know, handled correctly, and when we do all the machine learning, all the All the calculation without identifying the individual user,、mm. so make sure their privacy is protected. Yeah.、Mm. So Taylor, didn't you have a question to Paul as well? Oh, Taylor. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you while using an agent? Well, Taylor is getting a bit cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's not a、uh, happened to me, but what happened is I remember when I first joined Alibaba, we also do a lot of recommendation on the site.、Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of uh, what once our CEO actually talked about his own experience. He once bought a, a pair of shoes. Then he come back to the、uh, application and find that the pages all recommend the shoes. You know,、uh, probably a lot of you also experience those kind of uh, uh, experience. But I think、uh, over time we learned how to make sure, you know, diversify the recommendation, use more、uh, technology, more information. For example, like we talk about the smell, all right, and based on that you can come up with a more meaningful、uh, recommendation. So over time, it's.、Uh, We improve dramatically. I think it's、uh, it's just a learning process. Everybody have to、uh, adapt over time. Yeah.、Mm. Yes. Okay.、True. Cool. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. We have a couple guests for you as well. Thank you. Ah,、okay. uh, gift. Thank you. Yeah.